Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to the next episode of Django by Example. In this episode, we're going to learn how to make a dynamic view. We're going to basically make a view for a specific item, and uh, basically you can pick whichever item you want to see, and that's the item that will show up. If that's a little confusing, it'll make more sense in just a second. We want to go ahead and first define a second view, which we're going to call item. And this is going to look very, very similar to our previous one. Um, we're going to load a template called item.html, which we're going to make in just a second. Context is going to be empty for now. And we're just going to, once again, return an HTTP response, which is template.render context comma request. OK. This should look pretty much exactly the same as index, but we're loading a different template. Uh, essentially, this is going to be a page that represents a specific item. And we're going to display information about that specific item on our page. So we're going to create a new template that's going to be similar to the index, but a little bit different. And this one is going to have, uh, we'll do the head, and we'll do the body. Now, this template is going to have a particular instance of item. It's going to have a single item. So it'll be item. And let's just for now do item.objects.get id equals one. So we're going to get the Java item, but we're going to change it in just a minute so that it's dynamic. The user can choose whichever item they want to see and they'll get information. So once we have the item context variable, we can use it. So we'll make the title be whatever the item uh, name is, and then programming database. So for example, the title could be Java programming database or Eclipse programming database, whatever it might be. Uh, we of course want to give it the header, which is the item name, and we want to give the paragraph, which is the description. This is basically uh, what we had here inside of our for loop, um, but it's just for one particular item. So this page, again, represents just one item. Okay. So now we need to modify this view so that we can actually uh, specify which item we want. So we basically want to go to uh, whatever the URL is, so for maybe example.com slash item slash and then whatever the ID number is. So for example slash one would be Java slash two, I think, would be Eclipse. But whatever the ID number is, we don't know. But whatever the ID number is, we want to pull it up. So of course, we need to modify our URL. So open up the URLs.py for the app, and we're going to need to create a new URL. Now, this URL is going to include a regular expression, because we want to be able to match any ID number. So this might be a little confusing. Just bear with me. We're going to create a new URL. And we, of course, put our caret, and it's going to be item slash. And this is where we want to specify the uh, ID number. So to do this, and this is kind of weird, we need parentheses. And inside of the parentheses, question mark, capital P. And then inside of square brackets, we need to name our parameter. We're going to call it item ID. And then right after the brackets, we need a regular expression, which in this case is going to be 0 through 9 plus. Let's just finish this, and then I'm going to explain it, because that's really confusing. Of course, this is views.item, and we're going to name this item. So the URL, once again, is item slash and then some sort of ID. So we surround this in uh, parentheses to make it a regular expression group. Then we do question mark p to denote that this is a, um, a parameter. And it's going to match in our view. You'll see that in just a second. Inside of diamond brackets, we give it a name. And then we put a regular expression. You should probably know what regular expressions are uh, before you watch this. But essentially, this just means any digit, any number between 0 and 9. And the plus means one or more. So slash item slash some number. And that will, that will map to views.item. We want to modify this so that we add a second parameter. In addition to request, we want item underscore ID. And you'll notice that this matches the URL. So the URL uh, parameter, we called it item ID. And we're naming this 
item ID. So that's very important that those two names are the same. But essentially, whatever you type after the slash needs to match this regular expression. And if it does, then whatever you type there will go to this variable called item ID. So if I type example.com slash item slash one, then this item ID right here will have a value of one. If I type example.com slash item slash hello, that's not valid. That doesn't match this regular expression, so it will generate an error. Now, how are we going to use this? I think it should be pretty obvious. Instead of getting the item one, we want to get the item that matches with the item ID. So whatever item ID they may type in, it doesn't matter what it is, um, we need to get that particular uh, item that corresponds with that ID. So let's go ahead and start the website and we'll pull it up here. You'll notice nothing has changed here at all and we're gonna change the home page in just a moment. But if I go to slash item slash and we'll say one for example, you'll notice that it pulls up this page. The title is java-programming database, the name is java, and there's a description for java. So once again, slash item slash and some number it took whatever number I typed in, which in this case was one, and it assigned it to this item ID. I then went into the database and got the corresponding item and assigned it to the item context variable. On the page, I then got the name and description of that particular item, and indeed, it did show up. So it worked. We're good to go. Let's modify this a little bit. Let's change the home page so that it doesn't say the descriptions anymore, and it actually will link to the particular item. So here's how to do that. On the index, I'm gonna get rid of all of this stuff in here and replace it with an A, a, a link. The text of the link we want to be item.name. So we're gonna put item.name in curly braces. And to get the uh, URL, we can actually have Django generate the URL for us. And this is highly, highly, highly recommended. Uh, to do this, we use uh, curly brace and percent sign, just like we did for the for loop, because we're doing an action here. And we're going to use the action called URL. You first state URL, and then you need to specify the name of the URL. Now, that's why we named everything. We named them index and item. So in this case, I'm referring to the item URL, so I'm going to say the name is item. Now you'll notice that it says item ID is missing because in order to get a valid uh, URL for item, I need to give it an item ID. So I simply state, and I don't need the comma, just a space. I say item ID is equal to item dot ID. Okay, this is a little bit confusing. Item here refers to this item in the for loop. And ID is a field that's automatically generated by Django that contains the ID in the database. So we're basically saying the current item in our for loop, what's the ID of that, and that is the item ID for the link. If we refresh the page, you'll notice that we now just have a bunch of links. And if I hover over it, look at the bottom left corner of the screen, this is directing to I slash item slash one, slash item slash three, because I had that second Java that I deleted. Um, so on your computer, it'll probably say two, and then Python, PyCharm and C++. So basically it'll display the name of the item and a link that goes to the page for that particular item based on its ID. So Java has an ID of one, so this link will take you to slash item slash one. Now on the item page, let's just quickly add a back link. So we want an ahref, uh, we'll do that in a second, and we basically want, um, we'll just put LT, which means less than, so it'll do like a little, um, like back arrow and it'll say back. Now uh, to do this, we want to use a URL from Django. So we use um, curly brace percent sign URL. The name of the URL is index because that's what we named it there. And to get the index URL, there's no parameters that we need. So we can just say URL index. If I refresh the page, you'll notice at the bottom left, it goes back to the home page. Um, and if I click on it, it'll take me there. So I can go Java to see information about Java. I can hit the back button to go back to the home page. Very, very simple. Now let's take a second at some edge cases. So if we're here on our home page, all of these are obviously valid items because they're being pulled from the uh, from the database. 
And if I click on one, it will show me information about it and, and all of that. But let's say that I go to the URL and I want to try to modify it. If I put something bad, like let's say hello, for example, <clears throat> it'll give me a 404. It'll say the page was not found. The reason why is because in URLs, I said in order to be the item page, it needs to have one or more digits. That was the, the regular expression. And so in this case, it gives a 404 um, because hello does not match the expression of one or more digits. Now, let's say that I do match that. Let's say I put nine, for example. Well, I get an error that says does not exist because there's no item that has an ID of nine. So in the next episode, we're going to talk about how to deal with, um, with, with this uh, does not exist error. Uh, we'll make it so that instead of giving an ugly error page like this, it will actually just give a message that says the item doesn't exist. And this will involve using if statements, so you'll get to also see how to use if statements inside of your templates. So as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button and continue on for some more Django. Bye for now.